okay then uh, we can start now so good evening uh, welcome to this meeting this is the uh, second problem solving session of the course calculus of one real variable i am one of the tutor of this course and i am taking these tutorial sessions every tuesday from 7 to 8 so hi anmol uh, are you saying anything your mic might be muted no sir no okay okay that's great okay as i was saying this is the second problem solving session so let us begin okay so i am devojit I am one of the tutor of this course and I am also a PhD student in the Department of Physics of IIT Kanpur. So as we have already been notified by the course page that every Tuesday and every Friday we are taking tutorial sessions. I will be taking the tutorial sessions on Tuesday from 7 to 8. So here I will solve 10 problems based on the core, uh, things which were given in the second week of this course and these are actually problems for from the uh, previous run of this course so if you follow this and um, um, if you follow this you can uh, solve the assignment of this course this run of the course also which i think is due tomorrow okay so i will be going by problem one one by one problem and if you have any doubt uh, please feel free to unmute yourself and yeah please feel free to unmute yourself and also you can type in the chat box i'll be monitoring that okay so let us begin with the first problem of today Okay, so the first problem is we are given a function fx which is 2 over x square where x belongs to set of real number but not 0. Then we are asked to find the range of this function f. Now we know that set of real number is from minus infinity to infinity and if we exclude 0 then this is going to be this set minus the element 0 okay so then what will be the range of x square the range of x square will be actually the positive numbers so range of x square will be y belonging to r such that y is greater than equal to 0 but if we take into account that the domain is not containing 0 then this will be strictly positive so then for fx this is the domain which is the range of x square and from here we can find the range of f as zero to infinity so 
you will see that here the fourth option that is given here 0 is included but uh, in the actual uh, if you look at the problem carefully you will see that 0 will actually not be included because the set of real number does not contain infinity. So, 2 over x square will never be equal to 0 it will be very close to 0 but it will be never equal. So, I am getting this range by considering that when x square is very high or it is going to infinity the function f x will go to 0 and when it is very small which is very close to 0 then f x will actually tend to infinity. So, this is the range of the given function. So, the options given here they are not correct it might have been a typo the actual answer will be zero to infinity okay so this is the first problem of today uh, do anyone have any questions sir i had doubt in week zero assignment week zero assignment yeah week week zero assignment question number one okay so um, i tell you question yeah i know i have uh, done that and i also have uploaded so we can do one thing we can finish today's what today's assignments are and then we can go into the uh, week zero assignment if that is okay with you just I have little doubt uh, that is a natural number uh, union rational number that is countable or uncountable. Okay. Uh, if you can give me a moment, I will pull up the week zero assignment. Okay, so I think uh, the question was whether the set rational number and union of uh, natural. natural number and all the rational numbers, right? Yes. Sir. Yeah. So that was countable or not? Yeah. Yeah. So the answer will be this set is countable. But first, uh, let us see that all the natural numbers they are rational, right? So the union is actually a set of rational number. Okay. Yeah. So we define. So you can you can write two s two over one three s three over one, right? How do we define rational numbers? It has has to be p over q, where p and q are belonging to the set of integers, and q cannot be zero, right? So you can write two s two over one and three three over one and so on, and with that uh, the union is actually the set of rational numbers. Now we define countability by giving a bijection to the set of natural numbers to another set. If there is a bijection available then the set is countable otherwise it is not. So, in case of rational numbers this bijection is possible that is why this is a countable set. Sir, I am not understanding uh, how <laughs> bijection is possible because uh, rational numbers uh, are uncountable, they are infinite. No, fi finite, whether a set is finite or infinite, that does not uh, necessarily conclude its countability. Right. So, that is okay. I think uh, uh, we will take up this question at the last. Let me first finish what is planned for today. Okay. So, I think uh, nobody has any questions for problem number 1, then we can go to problem 2.
So here a function f x is given and also a function g x is given. Uh, Anmol, can you uh, mute yourself? Then it will be better for me to talk. Yes. Okay. So, and we have to find the limit of x tends to 3 f plus g. So, we can write it like and we can calculate all the limits one by one. So, this will be just 6. Similarly, you can calculate the limit of G. And this we can write as so this will be nine plus three times three plus nine, which is twenty seven. So here. The limit of uh, summation of these functions will be 33. Okay, so the last option is the correct one. So, is it okay with all of you? Yeah, Devi, Kishwa, and Mon, you have answered that uh, it is correct. So, do anybody have any other questions regarding problem number two? If not, then I will move to problem three. Okay, I think is okay let us go to problem number three okay so here also a function is given which is fx and this is defined like this uh, fx is equal to x if x is minus 2 to 0 and it is equal to 4x if x is greater than 0 and greater than or equal to 2 so then we have to check whether f is continuous at x equal to 0. So, how do we determine whether a function is continuous or not? At a point x equal to x 0, if if evaluated at x0 is equal to the limit of fx at that point. So, here we have to check whether the function is continuous at x equal to 0, where exactly at that point the function is defined differently. So, let us check both sided limits separately and 
we'll also draw the functions. So when it is minus 2 to 0, this is equal to x. So this will be like this. So the limit when we are approaching from left will be actually 0 because So this is going to be 0. Similarly, the limit when you are approaching from the positive side that is also 0. So the limit exists and this is equal to 0. Now let us see how the function is defined at x equal to 0. So here x equal to 0 point will be in this interval and the function is fx equal to x. That means f of 0 is also 0 and in this region the function will be like this where the slope will be different. So here if 0 is equal to limit of x tends to 0 if x which implies that the function is continuous. Okay, so this is the correct option. So we are done with problem number three. So does anybody have any question regarding it? Yeah, those who have written in the chat, your answers are correct. Okay, so anybody else have any questions regarding problem number three? If not, then I will move to problem number four. Okay. Okay, so the problem four also gives a function defined here and we have to find the domain of this function. So the function is ln root over mod x plus 1. So okay so let's let us first look at this ln function which is nothing but log based e and this is defined for x greater than 0. So ln x is defined for x greater than 0 and for x equal to 0 this will actually diverge right it will give uh, it will diverge to minus infinity. So 
that is one now we are looking at the function square root of x this is defined for x greater than or equal to 0 and similarly the mod of x is defined for every x Okay, so for this function, we will always get a positive number and for this function, we will always get a positive number, a, a positive number which can be 0 also because x, uh, 0 is an element of R. And if we take mod, it will also be zero. And if we take root of root of that, that will also be zero. So when we are talking about the domain of this function, we know that this will diverge when x is equal to zero. Right. Similarly. For mod of x plus 1, the term under the square root will be equal to 0 for x equal to minus 1. It will not be defined. So, for this function, the domain cannot contain the point x equal to minus 1. So, what will be the domain then? It will be all of R but the point minus 1. So, this is not defined. You can check for every value of x from r, this mod function is valid and it will always be greater than or equal to 0, greater than or equal to 0, then the square root will also be valid. But the ln term here is creating problem for the value of x equal for the value where uh, for the value 0, then for this term to be 0, x has to be minus 1. So that's why we are in excluding this part and this will be the right answer then. Okay, so any questions about this problem? Uh, if there aren't any questions, then I will move to the next problem, which is problem number 5. So, it is saying that for a function which is defined on R and it is also continuous, then the values of the function at two points is given. So at minus 9, the value is minus 1. So this is minus 9 minus 1. And for 
if you call 10 sorry at the point no this is plus 9 this is 10 for plus 9 the value is minus 1 and for 10 the value is 1 so this will be 10 1 now the given statement is that there exist always exist an x within this region such that fx is 0 so we have to see whether this is true or false and we can simply do that by using the fact that the function is a continuous function so that means from this point to this point whatever the function be it can be anything but whatever the function be there will be always one point where fx will actually be 0 this is happening because the function is a continuous function if it was not a continuous function then it could have been a different scenario for example from here it could have gone like that and after that it could have been like this with a discontinuity here so this is not the case because of continuity of the function okay so this is true this can also be proved from intermediate value property which basically states this thing that for a function which is continuous if f a is less than 0 and if p is greater than 0 then there will always exist 1x in the region a comma b where if x is equal to 0 so this is just the same thing as this property and here just uh, a is 9 and b is 10 okay so i think this is clear for all so this is the correct option okay so anybody has any doubt about it okay i see and mole and devi activating um, uh, writing something in the chat yeah okay then it's fine uh, anyone else okay then let us move to the next problem so here we have to find the range of one function which is defined in r minus 0 to r and the function is actually 1 over 
1 minus e to the power x. So, we have to find the range. So, let us first see the domain. x can be anything from minus infinity to infinity, but 0. So, let us first check the limits. When x is going to infinity, then what will happen? This term e to the power x, it will go to infinity and that we can write it like that. So, this term will blow up. So, this will be 0. So, now let us look at the limit that x is tending to 0. Okay. So, let me also draw a grid where I can plot the function. So, x infinity it goes to 0. Now, this is positive side from 0. So, we can see e to the power x for this region will be greater than 0. Sorry, greater than 1. How can we say that? We can also plot how e to the power x is going to look. at x equal to 0, this will be 1, let us say this is 1, this will go like this and this is continuous here and for x infinity, it will be infinity, x minus infinity, it will go to 0 and when you are coming from this side, uh, when e to the power x uh, is coming from this side and x is becoming 0, the value of this function e to the power x will be greater than 1. If it is greater than 1, then 1 minus e to the power x will be less than 0. That means, this will be minus infinity. So, let me write clearly. So, how will the function look? This will be like this. Right? Then, let us check this limit also. So, in this region, e to the power x is less than 1, which means this and this will imply that will be plus infinity. And what about the other thing? Limit extends to minus infinity, then fx will be
So e to the power x will go to 0, then this will be nothing but 1 over 1, then 1. So you can see that here it is 1. That means the function here when x is going to minus infinity will actually be 1. So let's say this point is 1. And then it will come and blow. Now, if you look at this plot, you will see that this region this shaded region is not accessible to the function. So, this region will be It will be excluded from the range. Then what will be the range? This part and this top part. So it will be minus infinity to zero and then one to infinity. Okay, so let me put a box around this. So, as you can see, that uh, there is probably a typo in these options, so none of these options are correct. And the correct answer is here. Okay, I think I lost my connectivity sometime. So let me. So I hope this is visible. I don't know when I lost the connectivity, so I will briefly explain this. So here the none of the options given are correct. The range is actually minus infinity to zero, then union of one to infinity, and this shaded regions is not accessible to the function get defined here. This is because uh, if we take this uh, function of e to the power x, we will see how we are obtaining this value. So, those who are present, uh, you can hear my audio and see my screen, right? I also lost the chat messages. So, if you have any question, you can just say it now. Okay, I guess nobody has any questions about this, so we'll move on.
to the problem number 7. Here. F is defined like this and this is actually x square then we have to find what is the minimum value of f so we can draw how this function is going to look So x square will look like this, but for this function defined here, we will see that, so this will actually be touching here, see that this 0 and 1, these points are not accessible to the function because the domain is defined in this way. So defined on the open interval of 0 1 which means x equal to 0 and x equal to 1 is not accessible to the function. Now we know that x square this function as a minima at x equal to 0. But when it is defined in this domain, the minima is not accessible when f is defined in 0 to 1. So, the minima does not, does not exist in this case. So, this is the correct answer. Okay, so let me Let me draw this a bit clearly. So, this is normal fx equal to x square when x belongs to R and when x belongs to 0 comma 1 the function will look like this so this 0 and 1 x equal to 0 and x equal to 1 point is not accessible so the minima does not exist in this case i hope this is okay with all of you so if anybody has any question please unmute yourself and ask Okay, so if it is okay with all of you, then I will proceed to the next problem. Which is problem number 8. So here, we are given a set S, which is defined by 1 over N for N 
belonging to the set of natural numbers union 1 then we have to check whether S Sir, is. Can you send these, uh, these questions in a sheet? Uh, yeah, the notebook that I'm working that will be uploaded. It is uploaded. If you and, uh, last, those uh, are complete way. Yeah, those are already uploaded. Already uploaded. Yeah, so you can do one thing. You can go to the NPTEL course page, and uh, okay. at the left bar at the bottom there will be one section called. Uh, tutorial sessions if you look at uh, click at that you will be given this excel sheet where okay. uh, the recording and also a folder is given where all the notes are uploaded so you can access that anytime okay okay, okay. okay. and uh, i think week zero lectures are also given uh, in this uh, folder link the okay. notebooks that recording is also available on that uh, week zero lectures recording is not given here, but uh, you can sir, uh, go to this link and uh, view the channel of mine and or, or the other TA. You can find a week zero recording there also. Okay. So week zero was kind of a demo run, so that is why it is not given in the main sheet, but it is available. We have we have made it public. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, can I continue with this problem now? Ah oh, yes. Okay. Because no one is present now in this meeting. Yeah, I think that I lost the connection for some time and uh, probably yes, everyone yes. late. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I will keep this open so if anyone wants to join, he can join back. Okay. 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 So then this will be one of. 1 3 and 1 over 3 and so on and union 1 so this set will be nothing but 1 1 over 2 1 over 3 and so on okay so we have to check whether this is compact the compactness is defined by two factors whether the cell is uh, whether the set is closed or and whether it is bounded so we'll check these two case and if both of them are satisfied then this set will be a compact set otherwise it will not so let us see the elements of the set on the real line so here it starts from 1 then it becomes 0.5 or 1 over 2 1 over 3 and then it goes in this direction but it never reaches 0 because infinity is not in the set of natural numbers so it will not contain 0. So, we know from the definition of a closed set that all the limiting po uh, boundary points has to be included, right. So, All the limiting elements are included. But here you will see that the limiting element for this set is 0 because the set is progressing like this, but 0 does not belong to S. So S is not closed so this property does not hold so this will not be a compact set anyway but for the sake of completeness let us also check whether it is bounded or not
okay so a set is bounded when for all elements let me write it like this for all a belonging to s there exist real numbers m and m such that this property holds so if that is true then this will be a bounded set okay but uh, one thing to notice uh, that m and m need not be in the set itself so for this case we can choose one point at minus one and one point at uh, two then all the elements of the set will be within those boundary and we can see that it is a bounded set but these are not some uniquely chosen bound boundary points we can also choose minus two two minus two three anything and we'll see that in that region all the values of values of this set is included so this will be a bounded set but uh, okay so let me write it here this will be a bounded set but it is not compact I'm sorry not closed so by definition this is also not compact so this is false and the correct answer is this okay so any questions about that sir uh, can you tell me where uh, that tutorial section is present i don't have doubt in that question okay so which tutorial section you are referring to where uh, i find uh, these questions okay these questions are will not be available to you you will get only the notebook where i have solved these questions in these sessions the questions will not pro sentence. last session yeah do you have are you logged into nptl now yes uh, you can go to the course page yeah, course and, and, and uh, can you see a pre tutorial sessions link? No, I don't have. Okay, then week one, week two, week three course, lecture notes, text transcripts, video downloads, problem solving sessions. Yeah, go to problem solving sessions. Okay, I clicked on that. Click here to view the problem solving session lectures. Yeah, week one YouTube link and uh, presentation folder link. Yeah, so in the presentation folder link, these notebooks will be given. Okay, sir. Okay, okay. okay. With, so, with solution. Yeah, with solution. These are not presentations per se, but uh, the notes anyway. Okay, the and notes. okay, and I have also pasted the link in the chat box. You can copy that if you want to. Okay, thank you. Sir. Okay. Sir, can you clear my doubt of week zero? Yeah, but yeah, actually, uh, I have to follow a protocol and finish this up first. So, okay. Uh, okay. So, let me go through that. Because uh, that session is uh, for one hour, that is till 8 p.m. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, uh, technically, it is from, uh, it will be ended at 8, but I can. Mm, stay for a bit longer that's no problem okay, okay so I, let me quickly finish these two problems then yes okay so this is saying the complement of the set of rational number in r is open closed bounded or none of the above so complement of the set of rational numbers in r so this is the set that we are working with so this is the set of
irrational number. So is it an open set? Any guess? The complement of the set of rational number in R is. Yeah, so generally the set of irrational number, is it open or not? Open hi hoga na. Because uh, jo rational number nahi hai, wo irrational numbers honge obviously. Malab complement ka irrational number hi ho jayega. Sare irrational number jo hai, wo to open hi honge. Yeah, but actually it is not correct. So let me go through the definition of open set. Okay. So definition of open set. Yeah. Open set. To, uh, so I will write it out for you. Real line means open interval in the real line. All, uh, you can say that open set are the set that with every point P contain all points that are sufficiently near to near to P that is all points who distance to P less than some value depending on P. Yeah. So, uh, this will be a, this will be an open set. If, if we, if we take a point A in S and take a small interval around it, then every point in that interval has to belong to the set S. So I can give you one example. So take two points, root 2 and root 3. Right. And in between there will be a number 3 over 2. So in between, sorry. So there will be a rational number present in between these two irrational numbers. So this is not open. Generally, when we write a comma b, we denote a open set uh, in real line. But here, the set of irrational number and rational number neither are open sets. So. I hope you have understood what I'm trying to say. So yes, you can a or b ke beech mein b you can take a, any a irrational a number and a small interval around it. And now you have to check whether all the elements in that interval are irrational. And you can take any irrational number and see that you will always find a rational number. Mm -hmm. So this is not an open set. And with that logic, it will also not be a closed set. Now we have to check whether it is bounded or not. So is R bounded? Set of real numbers. Yeah, it is not bounded, right? Uh, because in the one of the problems I defined what is a definition of a bounded set. For every element, there will be one M, I think it was here, right? Yeah. There will be this pair of M and cap capital M, which will enclose all the points. So, is this possible for this set of real numbers? No. So, that, that's why it will not be bounded. And so, if it is not bounded, and then irrational numbers will not be also be bounded because they can be as large as possible. Right? Yeah, exactly. So, this is the correct answer. Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, that's my dinner time, so that's why I'm saying that. Okay. So, uh, only one question is left. I'll quickly solve that and I'll get back to your problem. And I can also paste the link of that week zero lecture so you can you can 
always go through it because it is not given so i'll quickly stop sharing my screen Yeah, this is the week zero lecture that I recorded. You can follow that. Okay. Yeah, so I guess it will be better if you follow that. And uh, I think uh, okay, in the yeah. in the description, I have also given the note. Then if it is unclear, then you can always uh, put a question in the forum or you can ask in the next class. Then I generally come a little bit early, so you can join early and ask these questions about previous classes. Okay. Yeah. So I'll quickly solve the last problem then and we can then finish up this session. Oops. Okay. So the last problem is stating that for this function, if x defined in this way, then whether it is satisfied rows theorem or not. So what is Rose theorem? It says that for a function f which is continuous, if at derivative zero. Yeah, if at no, there is one condition if at two different points a and f b the values are equal then for a point in between a comma b there will be a stationary point stationary point meaning that derivative is zero. zero so you can imagine like this or this there has to be at least one stationary point in this interval right so for this function the rose theorem it will actually not be applicable because you can see at x equal to 1 and x equal to 2 the function is not defined right because it will blow up for both these values yeah. at the boundary so for this domain this will be false but uh, if you modify the domain as 1 comma 2 then the function is completely valid at every point right so then rose, the rose theorem will yeah for open interval then rose theorem will ap be applicable okay. yeah so you can take a value x equal to one plus epsilon where epsilon is greater than zero and y equal to two minus epsilon so you will see that fx will be let us just call them a and b it will be 
easier to match with the notation. Then if x at a will be this and at x equal to b will also be this and in between these two points there will be a stationary point where the derivative is 0 and we can easily find where the derivative is 0. So, this will be we can just calculate the derivative. So, this will be times minus 1 to minus x square plus so this will be 0 and we can rewrite it as minus of x minus 1 equal to 0 then we can take this out other side and it will be 2 minus x minus x plus 1 or 2x minus 3 equal to 0 which implies x equal to 3 by 2. So, at x equal to 3 by 2 there will be a stationary point and it is also evident if we draw the function. So, let us say this is 1 0 and this is 2 0 then both at these points the function will try to blow out and at the middle there will be a stationary point. Okay.